Good God, y'all, are, should I say, complete, global, saturation. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey, guys, this is my review for Season 5, Episode 2 of Supernatural. Good God, y'all, this is the episode that the Horsemen of War is introduced, the brothers further distance themselves due to the distrust between the two. Bobby's paralysis is made more permanent. We meet up with Joe and Ellen again, and we start to see the tides of the apocalypse coming across the land. The episode starts off with Castiel coming in, basically saying, I can't heal you, Bobby, and Bobby being real freaking pissed off about it until Castiel says, yeah, you see, I, uh, you know, betrayed my entire brethren, my brothers and sisters that I have been loyal to for thousands of years, for you chuckleheads, and you still failed. So yeah, I'm pissed more than you. All the while, the brothers are still having this big distrust, especially Dean and Sam. Dean can't trust Sam with anything. And as they go out to the town that has Rufus, Joel, and Ellen, in this battle with the entire town. Sam can't be trusted throughout the entire thing and it's getting on his nerves further and further as the battle continues in this town to the point where he's literally pushing Dean aside, getting very angry with him and asking him, can we please do this like professionals? Dean obviously having this distrust because of what has been caused, but at the same time still being aware and wary for his brother, especially when his brother is left behind with the other supposed demons. Now this is actually probably one of the best concepts of the episode is that war is there and he's actually played by Bosch, if that's the show name from the Amazon. This is cool because he was on this four years before that show started and he has a really freaking good monologue with Sam at one point just talking about how war happens and where he's been and what he's caused and he's just like you know it's not really hard to really push you guys and what's cool too is that you never really know what he is you can't tell if he's a demon an angel a creature or whichever because all he is is a guy with a ring that he's just spinning really really badly obviously and that brings me to the very kind of odd crux I have with this episode. I have a lot of things I like about this episode, but there's also a lot of parts that maybe go, what the hell's going on? Particularly the acting. It's bad. There's a lot of scenes, especially between Dean and Sam, that the dialogue just comes off as corny, cheesy, or very unprepared. And there might be a reason to this. They shut down Matsqui. Matsqui is this tiny little town near Abbotsford Mission that has essentially one main road through it and it's kind of funny that it's still there and it's kind of funny how the town is still so small considering it's right across the bridge from Mission but it is. It's this tiny little quaint town. They shut the whole freaking thing down when they're in there in front of that church that's literally downtown Matsqui. That gives you an idea that this town is actually small and it's funny enough it's not even far away but it's a great setup for what they're doing in this episode but I have a feeling it's kind of like that situation that happened with Ladner in season 15 where things felt real fucking rushed and really badly shot and shit like that. They had a choice of trying to do all these cool setups and admittedly some of them are interesting but some of them kind of look like they're half baked and that's how the episode feels a lot. And it's odd too because it's directed by Phil Segaria, it's written by Sarah Gamble. I just can't pinpoint it because some of the dialogue, some of the interactions in this episode are truly bad. But a lot of these are covered up by the good elements. There's great action scenes in this episode. The distrust when done well between the brothers is really well done. Bobby and Castiel's conflict at the beginning of the episode is really really good. That's even if Cass says I'm gonna go find God which the god that, that opens up so many bubbles now in terms of how this show proceeds but we all know it's a fool's errand i'm kind of a little bit vague on how it goes i just know that he fails and he's like yeah he's not here and then with the battle in the town that everyone is seeing demons but really they're not it's just they're all being manipulated by war and i love that very simple man-on-man -man concept and it just takes one little thing and even if reason is being said to them they'll still want to fight to protect themselves and again i like these elements of this episode i love how dean has to try and convince rufus which by the way too i keep going back and forth between thinking it's possible that dean could have figured this out <laughs> that it's war because it all happens in one conversation which 
I think that maybe if this episode script had a few more minutes in the oven, it could have been a little bit more fleshed out. It isn't exactly implausible that Dean couldn't figure this out, but it's also kind of a stretch at the same time. It adds up when War comes into the room, and Dean kind of listening to what he says is like, wait a minute, this, what, what's this Joker talking about? Obviously, he then tries to manipulate him again, but to try and prevent everyone from killing each other, they go and cut the ring off of War's hand and then he just dis disappears. Which again, who and what was he? I'm really curious as to what he was. It's cool. I think we're going to talk about him though uh, later on in the season when he's talking about where the where the uh, the horsemen are. And then the episode ends with Sam and Dean splitting up. I remember this bit because I thought, oh yeah, I forgot that they split up. And that's because Sam can't even trust himself after he killed these two people and he saw the blood on the ground. Even though it wasn't demon blood, he was still somewhat attracted to it. And he's like, oh shit, I have a problem. You might be wondering why I started off the review with that little quote. Do you know who is in this episode? I first I thought, hey, isn't that the Han Solo guy? No, I think that's the Iron Fist guy. No. It's Sean Roberts. It's fucking Wesker from the Paul W.S. Anderson movies. I know those movies were terrible, but who cares? I can't believe fucking Wesker is in this episode. He's a Canadian actor. He's out, he, he lives out here. So it was just so cool to see him in it. And he's like this military dude and whatnot. And actually it showed off how short he is. He's shorter than fucking Dean. I thought that was hilarious. But I don't care. I'm short too. I just... You know, in the movies, Wesker just looked so tall, but was he wearing, like, seven-foot pump-ups or something? Either way, the episode has a lot of issues uh, purely because I feel that they were rushing things, the script was a little bit needing more baking. At the same time, the action's fun, the concept is really cool, the idea of war, his monologue is really well done. The goods outweigh the bad still, but there is a bit of a conflict between them, which is why I'm going to give Good God Y'all a 5 out of 7. It's, yeah, at one point it would dip down to a 4 for me, and then it went back up to a 6, and then it came down to a 5. So, yeah, it's a little bit of an up and down battle, but it's unfortunate. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it just felt a little odd in certain places. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, but it was it was a little bit weird watching it. Good Gone Y'all is a good episode with a nice reunion with Rufus, Ellen, Joe, and with Sam and Dean. My highlight for this episode is definitely Titus Wilver. He's just perfect in his double role of Roger in the Horseman War, despite having a limited screen time. What I love about his portrayal of War is that he just enjoys chaos. He enjoys it so much that he practically gets off on it. His conversation with Sam was really good, especially when he lets uh, Sam guess who he truly is by saying, I was in Germany, then in Germany, then in the Middle East, I was in Darfur when my beeper went off. I was getting hooked up with siblings. I've got three. We're going to have so much fun together. Overall, I gave a good god y'all a five out of seven. Yeah, no, Titus is definitely the best part about this episode. His very limited role in this episode is very standout. It's probably one of the saving graces of this episode from being kind of mediocre. And thankfully, the guy has had a really good career afterwards. Good God, y'all, is an interesting sociological episode. But one thing I find peculiarly, I can't talk right now, interesting is that Castiel is looking for his father, which is completely reminiscent of Sam and Dean looking for their father in season one. It is also a good storyline uh, point that Castiel's powers are not in full capacity because a lot of his power came from the angelic hierarchy. It's also refreshing to know that the storyline of the amulet that Dean wears has significance. I'm really curious to what Bobby thought it was when he was going to give it to John, though, and, and Sam gave it to Dean. Because all Bobby said was that it was really special, and other than that, we don't know much about it until season five of until season five of what it really does. Unfortunately, we don't see it really come into full effect until season 11. Naturally, for Supernatural, they're going to have revelations as a blueprint in some, point, uh, some way to represent the end of time. So it was nice to see how and why a town turns on itself. Especially good to see Joe, uh, Ellen, and Rufus. And now we are introduced to the Four Horsemen, the first being War. I meant uh, it's a little on the nose to have a red Mustang as the red horse, but with Supernatural it makes sense. That's because Sam and Dean live out their lives on the road with their steel horse, and that the, the horsemen adapt to that era of time. Yeah, I'll admit the, the coat maybe was a bit much. 
Uh, also, I've always found Mustangs really small, so I can always, I can, I see where you're coming from. I, to this day, always remember that little bit between Dean talking to the soldier about how Dean talked about literally serving in hell. I also love the line where Rufus says at the end, stop firing, usually means stop firing. I did feel like them stopping war was a little too easy by simply cutting off his finger and the ring was the source of power. Later on, we see Death's ring coming into play in Season 6, and I wish all the rings had equal significance of some sort, but we didn't really want to repeat storylines altogether to make, by making Apocalypse 2.0. One thing that always was always interesting is that the writers interpreted the horsemen as bringing down one society's and country's collapse. There are a whole bonus feature on it called The Ride of the Horsemen on Season 5 DVD, and I highly recommend it. Sam leaving Dean was a punch to the gut, given how that we loved and cherished the brotherly relationship for four years, but then clearly when they patch it up, they patch it up good. It's one of my least favorite episodes of the season, and it's still a great episode in itself, but we'll get to my least favorite soon. Ooh, I'm interested to see what is your least favorite. Much like Season 4, Season 5 inst inst instantly throws you into plot and quality. I love Good God, y'all, mainly because of the Horsemen War. The Horsemen of the Apocalypse were honestly one of my... One of my one of the most unique and creative enemies in the series, each of them a different in their own powers and personality. I love that the fact that Sam admits uh, that he has a problem. I give them ball uh, props for having the balls to do that. This episode is probably my least favorite Horseman episode, mainly because of that one thing that I don't like, and that's Ellen. I'm sorry, but I never felt like this uh, or her Ripley wannabe behavior. I never understood why people liked her. Uh, and instead hated Joe. To me, it was the opposite. I like Joe, and I always felt that Ellen hold, uh, held her back. Controversial opinion, I know, but I'm honest. Uh, I didn't get that with Ellen. I I get where you're kind of coming from. Sometimes the dialogue kind of rolls off like it's on repeat. But I, I did like her. I think that they she was in the show for long enough that her shtick didn't get old. Maybe if she had been around a lot longer, yeah, I could see that. And I also could see why they use them so sim uh, so very s seldomly. Good God, y'all, is another strong episode. Love the actor that played War, his dialogue with Sam at attempting to justify or excuse his own actions while throwing a guilt trip on Sam is a juicy bit of dialogue. Lots of villains have tried to guilt the brothers to get into their heads, but this is one of the better interactions. Sam and Dean, each conversation between them is raw and intense. Sam struggles to prove that he can handle himself without Dean putting training wheels on him. Reminds him of how why it was easy for him to turn Ruby when Dean was came back from hell. And this is setting up for character growth for both of them in Fallen Idols nicely. Again, I can I still sympathize with both perspectives. It's not simple his right, he's wrong attitude. No, it's not. You're very much true there. They're both trying to do the right thing, but they're in their own way. That scene in the market where Sam kills the two men and strongly looks at the demon blood on the blade, which is a very well shot, choreographed, and acted out. Sam looking at the blood is one of the moments from the season that always stuck out to me. And his comment later about missing being able to save people sums up his ability to do his job as a hunter exponentially better, but not just the addiction to power blurred the lines between good and evil for him. As Chuck said last season, I don't envy the weight on your shoulders. The twist in the, of the plot is a good one. I think they're demons. They think they're demons. They were demons. What if there are no demons? It's just people killing each other. The fight between Rufus and Dean ending with, you figured that out on your own genius? Hope you enjoyed it. I did. I did enjoy those bits. You, you bring up actually some of the very good bits. And like I said, I do like the idea of them turning on each other it's kind of a variation of Croatoan, but it's still actually pretty well done. Good God, y'all, is one of those episodes I always cherish, along with Croatoan, and I believe the second episode of Season 9, the one where Abaddon and a bunch of demons corner Sam and Dean with a bunch of demons in, an e in either an abandoned village or something like that are my favorites. I line big, I like big scale episodes that make it feel more grand. I like the stakes that are more Monster of the Week and show the larger ramifications. More manipulating a whole town and seeing that it is epics and end of day stuff. Neighbor against neighbor and all that. There are episodes I wish we saw more of because it was the brothers' more militaristic side, which they've had from John since he was a Marine, I remember correctly. That's uh, with... That's a side that I always love to see. I guess Supernatural is a small suburban town, go bump in the night, but at the end, uh, that when Zack transports Dean to 2012, is kind of what the thing you need with stories like Lucifer walks again or the darkness walks again. Plus, we're introduced to Rufus. I can't remember if we mentioned him prior or not, but I fucking love Rufus, and I wish we got more of him. 
Now, actually, kind of going on a tangent about what you're saying here, you know, I do like these larger scale things too. It's definitely a lot more grandiose, a lot more weight on your shoulders, a lot more to go on in the episode. However, and this is purely from a story writing perspective, as well as a production perspective, it's expensive. It's actually really expensive to do these things. So that's why they don't do these big episodes as much. Highly underrated character in my opinion. I thought him and Bobby were comedic gold together. Plus the search for God and Dean's pendant being a teacher to him himself, essentially, which is paid off to perfection and don't call me Shirley. This is where I think me and you disagree on the Chuck reveal in 14. Don't get me wrong, I share your sentiments and like Chuck, but after thinking about it all, it makes sense at least thematically. The boys find out their lives are determined in the season five is great because the whole fuck you free will aspect, but it's also the show's downfall with its overuse of meta narrative because once you break the fourth wall, you didn't go too far, then all you're left with is epitomizing the rat trap the characters are ensnared in. If the show ended here, it wouldn't have been a problem, but I can't say I was given, if I was given the reins, I wouldn't have ended it differently in season 15, but Chuck adversary is a lie. With all season, with all the seasons accounted for, that's the only way you can take it. Now it could have done, been, it could have been done better. I would have lined down a little more focus on Chuck's side. We get more, more. Uh, we get the my creations disappointed me in season eleven, but upon retrospective, I think the only thing I can understand was a shift in characters. That the, the characters caught on to his game and realized that they were all his playthings. They were never free will. It was always Chuck's plan, story, and no longer play. We can't. Honest, and I love that, honestly. I mean, I wish there was more setup, but I guess it's the hindsight God was never painted. See, I now I can see where you're coming from here, too. And also, I said that maybe if they had actually properly built this up in season 14, instead of just throwing it in in the last 20 minutes, maybe, maybe I could have believed it. But they did a, such a terrible job at building it up. It just made no sense thematically. It was just so poorly put together. Oh, um, I will make one comment though before we go. If you guys could make them a little shorter, just a little shorter, because this was what four comments and it went 10 minutes long almost. So I, I want to make sure I don't bore you guys to death. So if you guys can make them just a little bit more concise, that'd be great. And the next episode is free to be you and me. So make sure to give me guys' comments about that in the comment section below and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Till then. See you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.